We know what fear is, defined as false evidence appearing real. Our guest today, ladies and gentlemen, is nothing short of fearlessness, power, and I mean, just greatness, man. A queen of note. She's even got a smile on a game. Yes. Come yeah. on, come on. The simple beauty, ladies and gentlemen, that woman embody is what she expresses. And I'm always excited, you know, just to be in her presence, man. She's amazing. She's become a good friend of mine. She is the fearless, incredibly powerful and beautiful to me, listen, I think you know what? There's usually that that round of applause moment, yeah. Hi guys. <laughs> What's up, Queen? <laughs> to me, how you doing? I'm great. Oh, I'm great. Man. I'm so happy to have you on the show. Thank you for having me again, yeah, yeah. guys. Now you you need to know this is something fresh. It's new. Mm. It's a all brand new show. It's it's nothing you know like the past. Yeah. Freshly, mm. this one is called Sport Chats with Rain D. Right. Yeah, yes. man. And we got to just update our listeners worldwide once again. You are tuning into Sport Chat with Rain D and Nedzina Langande Renda Anichibura, a.k.a. Rain D, your number one MC. You know what we got to say. Yes, yes man. man. <laughs> <laughs> Dooms, I'm so happy you're here. This show is all about one-on-one -on -one engagements. We go into the detail about who you are and of course, I'm planning to be touching on sports yes. and rugby. The yeah? fave, the fave, the faves, mm. man. And there's a lot that we're going to be doing in the show. We're also going to be joined on the line by Uzinte Mbupa. You know, she's the captain of the Springbok Ladies Seven side. Yeah, yeah, and she's also part of the 15 uh, side team. That's also part of the qualifying. Yes, you know, that's in happening Brakpan. in mm. Brakpan right mm -hmm. now. So, and I see you're already looking great because you got your your green and gold on, man. It's Bok Friday, guys. Come it's on. Where were we when you guys were getting these shirts, man? <laughs> we were at the airport featuring. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just happy to have you here. And once again, to our listeners, do make sure you touch base with us at THD.24. That's who we are on Insta Greasy. And I know you want to chat to me as well at Rendani underscore N01MC. Now, Dooms, yes. Arska Nako, we got less than 50 seconds to go straight into it. And do make sure you mm -hmm. smile, man. This is audio and visuals at the same time. Yeah. Hello, future husband. Hello. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> so, Dooms, for people who don't know you, you know, just give us a little brief of who you are and what you're about. Okay. Um, they call me Dumi, but guy, they call me Tumelo. Let's say, okay. Mm -hmm. um, I'm in rugby. I'm the UJ women's team manager. Yeah. And uh, as of recent, I'm yeah. the Golden Lions senior women's team manager. Yeah. And I'm a full time student. Okay. And I also volunteer sports wise. Yeah. And yeah, I'm accredited from here to tomorrow in everything <laughs> rugby. <laughs> um, yeah. I don't know. I but do a lot. You do a lot, dudes, yeah. you know. But you know what's so interesting? You are a black female. Yes. Hailing all the way from the Capricorn province of Limpopo. Uh, Limpopo that yes. tropical province, mm -hmm. you know. And you are playing rugby. You are involved in rugby. Yes. You're in leadership structures in rugby. Yes. You know, now I want to know the background of that. I mean, it's not like you just woke up one day, worry. You know what? Mm -hmm. rugby. No, guys, yeah. the dream was to be a pro tier. Okay. You know, okay. I was netball through and through, first team captain, yeah. there, back home. Yeah. You know, always going to trials, but never just quite cutting it because of the... The, 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 the black race, you can say yeah, it's straightforward. Yeah, yeah. I mean. The million dollar skin. So yeah. then I come to Joburg, I'm like, ah, oh, new province, first start. Yeah. Wow, new province, same problems. <laughs> even, <laughs> even more, now even it's real. Even more yeah. problems. <laughs> and I'm like, so what am I going to do? I yeah. can't do athletics. I can't do netball. Yeah. They're trying to start this touch rugby thing. Yeah. For Rez, I jumped in, yeah. loved it. Yeah. Stayed in rugby yeah. since 2013. Since 2013? Yeah, that was my development year. People are blessed to play rugby from yeah. the age of nine. I wish I'd known. Yeah. I would have. Yeah. But yeah. where was the interest, though? I mean, there must be something that triggered it. Because, you know, it's not like... Uh, uh, let's break the... Let's talk stereotypes as well, yeah. you know? It's not like every lady goes and split plays rugby. We, we've got the sports that are commonly known for yeah. for, for ladies, you know? Definitely. Your netballs, yes. you know? 
just to name a few you know yeah um for me it was just i'm naturally inclined to any sport yeah put me you know res league i'm i was at uj yes and then back then there was res league yeah so whatever sports there was soccer volleyball yeah. netball athletics yeah yeah this child jumped in you know yeah. sports moon of the year and then when they're like rugby i'm like okay that's another sport i need to conquer yeah, because yeah. that's I love challenging myself. I yeah. never act like I know. Yeah. Plus then I used to love gym. And yeah. then I didn't have time for gym. So yeah. I was like, let me just jump in. Have you seen rugby player legs, guys? <laughs> they, they are on fire. Exactly. Yeah, they are on fire. Yeah. Mm? I know this conversation is going to be so nice because why it's all right. You know, mm. Nami, rugby is my thing. Yes. You know, although the six pack has faded, it'll come back. Even mine, guys. <laughs> I had one, I swear. But it's going to come back. Mm -hmm. And I know I have to share this to our listeners, man. And if they think we're showing off, we're just showing God's greatness. Yes. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But uh, to our listeners, you know, I had the opportunity of playing for two amazing uh, rugby unions in Gauteng. The Blue Bulls yes. and the the Golden Lions, yeah, yeah. and man, it's it, it's so so amazing to be part of a professional setup. And I think that's the one thing that rugby has gotten right for the guys. For the guys. Uh huh. For the guys. Yeah. Tell me more. Tell me more. Because Where, where's your mind there? Talk no, to me. No, the thing is, you are part of a professional setup for yeah. the guys. Yeah. I was I played for the provincial women's team. Yeah. Day and night. Hmm. Imagine walking onto a field, you see they spilled out all the eyes, the empty parade bottles. Yeah. Like, am I not part of the same union as a senior team? Yeah. What's going on? Yeah. Then they call you amateur. Hmm. But then you must still go and play for SA. Hmm. And they must be professional at SA. Well, you know what's shocking me, Tumsna? Because uh, we had Uposha Mudise here, yeah. you know, on our first episode. And shout out to you for being our second guest. Yeah. Yes, eh. And, you know, I, I'm going to amplify today because I did say we're going to speak to some great people as well, such mm -hmm. as yourself. You know, mm -hmm. we had Uposha Mudise and she was speaking about the imbalances of, you know, sports and specifically in football. Yes. Ibanyana Banyana as compared to Bafana Bafana. Yep. There was some shocking facts that I learned of yesterday, man. Yeah. The ladies would earn 25 rand a day, mm -hmm. you know? And if you play a game, you get Boma one point something. Yeah. Lohana, that's only recently. When they were playing, we're talking about Boma 200, 300, 400. On tour, imagine. On tour. When you're converting to all those euros and, 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 and. <laughs> And man, I mean, there's still tax after that. And yep. this is the, and you still have to go. And after playing a game, you have to submit Give your jersey. Mm. And then, you know, they get it washed and then you play with the same jersey again. Yep. So that's football. And yes. when we speak football, we speak of SAFA, you yes. know, the South African Football Association. Yes. Now let's speak rugby. You know, Saru. Saru yeah. Mm. And I think you've mentioned already Orokarona lady imbalances. You there know. are imbalances. Yeah. Um, if you think about the number of contracted players, only recently they started to reshuffle the yeah. whole contracted player yeah. situation. But for women, only now we're getting reps of, I think, five now in the Springbok ladies team yeah. currently. Yeah. And why did it take that long? Yeah. Do you understand what I yeah. mean? So now you're there, you only, there's certain people, you have to have a job. Personally, mm. if I decided to be like, you know, I don't want to play rugby professionally, I yeah. would not survive anyway. Yeah. I'd have to survive on handouts. Yeah. But guys don't have that. Guys don't have that. They get sponsorships right off the bat from yeah. the moment they make any provincial team. Yeah, yeah. Think Elton Junchies. He just, um, uh, I think he's got a Puma sponsor, I think. Yeah. Is it Puma or something? Oh, oh, sec, something yeah, yes. that one, yeah. And then now, brand. only now, oops, mm. sorry, yeah. only now, Oh, Zintle, we're about to talk to her. She yeah. also just jumped in. Yeah. Only now. First lady. First lady. Out of how so many years, man. Exactly. But I like you. I like you because you know what you're doing. You're yes. really, you know, speeding things up. And mm -hmm. I, I feel like a king because I'm going to be engaging queens, you yes. know. In the spirit of Women's Month, we're definitely going to be chatting to Uzintle, um, Upa, you know. And I believe she's on the line right now. So, uh, Zintle. Hi, hello, hello, Nani. Hello. How are you, Zintle? I'm well, thanks for you, Nani. I'm good. You sound like you're smiling, Zintle. You sound like you're smiling. <laughs> I'm always smiling. I'm always smiling. Oh, man. Welcome <laughs> to, um, you know, this amazing show. It's THD24. And, of course, it is Sport Chats with Randy. Thank you so much for having me um, on the show. Yeah. Really appreciate it, Nani. It's more than a pleasure. And I'm not alone here. I'm also with a queen who's just like yourself into rugby. Her name is Dumi Leseke. Dumi, you want to say hi to Zintle? Hi, Zintle. How are you? Hello, Dumi. I'm well. Thanks. How are you? I'm great. Thanks. All right, man. I love this. You know, I, I was telling with Dumi now, Zintle, that I feel like a king because I'm speaking to queens. 
I'll take that as a compliment. Oh, man, it certainly is. But without wasting any time, Zintle, you know, we want to just have a chat to you because just for people who don't know you, you are the captain of the Springbok Ladies 7 sides, right? Yes. And you're also part of the 15 team, uh, the 15 squad as well that's currently playing or part of the qualifiers for the World Cup. Definitely, that's me. That's me. And they're doing great. And you guys are doing great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yes, we're doing so well with the very um yes. it's gonna be a decider whether we qualify or not qualify for the for the World Cup now. But um positive the girls um are doing great. We just mm. came for the and now. That went well. So I'm very positive about for tomorrow. Okay. And yeah. All right. Now, Zinta, I want to know, because I believe when we speak of you, there's history in the making, you know? You are the first queen, yes, queen, to be endorsed by a big brand such as Puma, yeah? Yeah. Yes, Nani, that is um, such a great opportunity for me to mm. open up doors there, as they for the women who are like me as well. Yeah. I mean, I'm like over the moon. I'm super excited for the for the for the endorsement. It's yeah. like something new to me, something that I always dreamed of if they can do it for the guys as you guys mentioned. Yeah. I mean why can't they do it for us as well? Um, yeah. I've yeah. always tried before but they always say like um it's it's not as easy to contract or to give endorsement to women like yeah. uh, because we only com compete internationally. We don't have like super rugby, we don't have mm -hmm. America, we don't have so we only gonna be seen wearing the stuff yeah. once in a while. Yeah. yeah. No, that makes sense. And I think, you know, you've mentioned some some few interesting factors, but you know, on this show we don't like romanticizing things. Yeah, yeah. Eh? You know, <laughs> we, we have to keep it real sometimes. And I'm sure since you're a professional in the sporting code, and of course the yeah. sporting code is dominantly played by males, you know, there are a few challenges that yourself as well as ladies like Utumi, who's in studio right now, have faced and are currently facing. Can you just give us a little, you know, a brief understanding of some of these challenges? Um, and Danny, definitely there are challenges mm. every, everywhere we go, especially with women's sports. Yeah. Currently, yeah, rugby is um, equality. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Between, between the Springboks as compared to us as well. Mm. We know we don't play as much as, as they are. Yeah. And yeah, but we don't get to be treated the same way as they yeah. are treated. Yeah. But at the same time, I look at it in a way that um, we, I think we need to win more. Mm. Maybe after qualifying now, things are going to change. That's yeah. what they always say. But yeah. uh, I can, I ask, can I ask you like mm. a question though? But do the boys win all the time? Mm. Do mm. they win all the time, but they still get the sponsorships? I get you very much. I get very well. The boys don't always win. Mm -hmm. mm. But now, yeah. It's a challenge. It's a challenge. But it is a challenge. Yeah. I think, you know, obviously, as we're highlighting these things, you know, it's not just, here's a common interesting part. It's not just in rugby, yeah. you know. It's, yeah. it's also yeah. in other sporting codes, you know. We had, as I was telling Utumi, that we had Posha Modise in studio yesterday, and she's a legend in, in uh, African football. There's no one who scored over 100 goals, you know, for their country. Men or women. And mm -hmm. ma male and female, but she still hasn't received the recognition. And I can only imagine when it comes to rugby, where it's more of a masculine sport, yeah. you know. I'm sure the pressure is still piling up on, onto the ladies. Yeah, definitely it's like that, yeah, as well. Mm. So for an example, we had like experienced ladies, yeah, mm. that uh, still asked to count to count their their caps, for instance. Yeah. So as a rugby doesn't really keep track of our caps sometimes. Yeah. Or if they did, they wouldn't be asking how many caps or how many games mm -hmm. or that we played for as a rugby. So things like that, man. Yeah. Like keeping track of the caps, uh, knowing who's the senior player, who knowing who who's going to reach their 50th gap. That is like a huge thing for us, yeah. you know. Or yeah. even the stats. Yeah. Like now, yeah. if you try and Google Zintle stats, you're not going to find anything. Mm. But with the guys, you can ask from last last week's anything, game. Anything. Mm. Exactly. I love the fact that the queen's already chatting, man, because <laughs> you guys can relate to this. Yeah, no, but I'll see her tomorrow. I'm going to, we're still going to talk tomorrow. Still going to have Exactly, a chat because tomorrow. it's really unfair. It's honestly unfair because now we're going to watch the girls tomorrow for mm. free. Mm. And then same day, the boys are playing in Loftus. We have to, you know, scrap for tickets. Mm. Doesn't make sense. Even for that. 
Exactly. So why but why wouldn't you let the girls play before the guys? Like, exactly. You know, it's so out there. Like, because you're in the same province. Not but, just like put us a trust fund and let them mm. <laughs> Exactly. In Pretoria, I mean, lost us, where everyone is going to go to. I mean, mm. who's going to come to? Exactly. While, while the team was playing in Victoria. Yeah, yeah. Now, Zinta, I know time is of the essence, and you guys have a big game tomorrow. You know, just, yeah, you know, do. if there's one thing you could ask the South African Rugby Union to change, what would that be, coming from a professional such as yourself? Um, Definitely equality. We don't want to be the same as the mm-hmm. team, but the gap mustn't be just, like, be seen, like, by everyone, yeah. by everyone who's even out of the system. Yeah. The gap must be a bit closer. We must be treated as, not as the same, because it won't be like that, but as close to yeah. the spring box. Because we call ourselves spring box, So mm. Randy, they must can I just say two that. words to... That, but they must also respect the fact that we must call ourselves spring box. Yes. Isn't it? Yes. Hi, isn't it? Tomorrow, the Lions ladies are going to be playing. We're going to be there now. I just okay. want you guys to know that we back you guys all the way. Yes. You have one of our girls there, Ayanda. I know she's injured now. But, yeah, yeah. yeah I need you guys, like, to just know that yeah. as much as you guys are suffering up there, everything you do changes everything for us down mm-hmm. here. The same way you guys are fighting for equal treatment. Mm-hmm. Unions are starting to see that when you give the girls the chance, the money, the opportunity, they mm-hmm. will shine. Mm-hmm. So I want you guys tomorrow, back yourselves. We back you. We have your backs all the way you are making it into the world cup and you will even shine at the world cup you're not just making it there to fill an Come african on. spot yes okay thank you so much to me now you're giving me all good to the I, can, I, I can already <laughs> imagine <laughs> Zinta smiling right now man i can picture you <laughs> oh, yeah, we're gonna be out there doing it for all of you guys who yes. are looking up to us and we're gonna put aside all the Obstacles in front of us, we're just gonna play our heart out. We know how it means to yes. to you guys, to us as well. We yeah. just wanna lift the women's um rugby flag up again, again, yeah, in South Africa. We yeah. just wanna be recognized again and it's gonna start with tomorrow and oh, we yes. make it. Power, power, power. Queen, to, to you and the rest of the team, we salute you. And right here on Sport Chats with Rain D, man, it's it's an honor to engage you right now. So a big congratulation in advance, yeah? Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Renani. All right. Have a good one, and please send our regards to the rest of the team. All right. We'll do so. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Zintle. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye. And once again to our listeners, that was Uzin Tlempu, part the captain of the Springbok Ladies' seven side. And, of course, she's also part of the 15 team, yep. you know, 15 squad yep. where everybody, and they're qualifying for the World Cup right now. Tomorrow mm-hmm. they got a big game up against Kenya. And, man, once they win that, it's confirmed. Now nah, they're taking it, guys. It's they're a done taking deal. it. They already beat Madagascar 73-0. Yeah. I mean, they didn't even give Madagascar a chance, man. They Look, didn't man, get Madagascar Look, man, we need to dominate. Green. You need to dominate. Like, we yeah. can't always be South Africa. Oh, we did down there and we're not yeah. shining. Yeah. Ah, no, nah, back my girls. We yeah. got this. You back your girls. Yeah. Now, now Dooms, after speaking to someone like Zintle, hmm? someone who's in the national squad, yeah, someone who's doing it as we speak, but you can hear, there's joy because of pride. Yes. But deep down, there is a bit of, mm-mm. Pride don't pay the bills, guys. Mm. Pride does not pay the bills. Mm. Um, it doesn't make sense that when the girls leave, let's just say for now they're in Brakban, Some most yeah. of them are from Western Province. Mm. Uh, most of them probably have jobs that they took time off of. Yeah. And they're still going to get back, and then their fees, are, they're still going to wait. They're like, no, we're still waiting for Saru to play. Yeah. But when the guys play, it's like probably before they even leave. Yeah. You even see the yeah. way how some of the guys prep. they like, oh, let's go out. They take their friends out. Yeah. Yeah. The girls can't even do that. Mm. Pride does not pay the bills. So, but why? Why is it that um, the, the unions, when it comes to the ladies, have not united and approached the South African Rugby Union when it comes to such things? You know, it's the same thing we were engaging with Uposha because mm. it's 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 not easy standing up alone. 
you see, you isolate yourself, you make yourself a target, yep. you become a problem, and at the end of the day, you get crucified, yeah. you know, whereas your colleagues, the ones are quiet, they're like, they know we're suffering, but they're all quiet. Yeah, I'm yeah. both, because now, it's the same with me, me and my friend, Lipiwe, we're yeah. building, technically, we're being, starting to be branded as troublemakers, because yeah. we ask those pertinent questions. Yeah. One of the chairman's chair meetings yeah. at Lions, we asked, okay, you guys are talking about transformation, you guys are talking about development. Mm. Where does the woman fall in? Mm. They're like, no, you fall in under both. I'm like, so why aren't we getting a piece of both of those monies? Yeah. Because money is being pumped in. That's yeah. what Saru's target is, transformation and development. Yeah. If we fall under that, mm. why are we still struggling just to get match fees? Yeah. Yeah. Girls are playing rugby without match fees. Girls are playing rugby just for transport money to go to a provincial practice mm. and go home. Mm. It's painful to watch. Yeah. Some people might say this is a horrible thing to speak about, but we need to speak about it as gentlemen, yes. as, as a guy. Yeah. Women go through certain things in a month that guys don't experience. Yeah. Now imagine having to commit yourself to physical activities mm -hmm. while you're going through your natural you know, yeah. processes every month. You know, it, it shows that you're putting in extra effort. Yeah, I told you this happens. It's not the first time it happens. Yeah. So you have to suck it up, take your pills and get through it. Just like that. To, to, to a certain extent, I understand. But sometimes you cannot gauge how, yeah. how tough it's going to be that month. Yeah. Like, it's debilitating I mean, pain. Just, I mean, just, as I said, it, it, it sounds horrible because I'm, mm -hmm. a, I'm a guy, you know. But you still have to perform. If you're on yeah. starting lineup, are you going to give that up for the next person who's going to take your spot? And yeah. now you're not going to get that extra little bit of transport money. Let's speak the psychology of this, though. Let, let's speak it. We, this is digital online radio. No, you speak, know? It, speak, speak it. Let's speak it. You know. Well, let's speak about being on a period yeah. as a woman, you know? Yeah. You know, that cycle that you go through, you know, yeah. menstrual uh, cycle for all females. Mm -hmm. And literally, let's speak rugby on its own. Yeah. It's a, it's a demanding sport. It is. Physically. Yes. You know? So I'm trying to combine all of that. That's why I want to understand the psychology. Okay. And then the frustration of knowing that I'm putting all of this effort in and I'm still not getting paid. Yep. Or paid enough. Um... Randy, there's PMS, right? Yeah. Pre-menstrual syndrome. Yes. It's all the symptoms that you get. You break out. You are moody, lower back pains, mm. no energy. You're just lethargic. Mm. But you still have to go to rugby practice mm. on top of that. You still have to function because most of the players are students or are um, working somewhere. Mm. You still have to perform in those all those aspects, and you still have to be a woman according to society yeah. standards. Yeah. And then... It's the week of the period. Let's mm -hmm. just say it's the week where you have to play. Yeah. Now, it's worse. You have to take painkillers. You're not supposed to be take painkillers before you play a game. Yeah. So now, what are you going to do? Because mm. 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 now, mm. if you get hit mm. somewhere and then you get concussed, there's painkillers in your system. It thins your blood. You get a cut somewhere. Your blood is flowing extra heavy now. You're losing blood in two places now. Mm. Mm, Do you understand? Mm, mm, and mm. it puts you at a higher risk, but yeah. you still have to perform. You still have to perform. And when and it, that's the part where it, I don't know it how gets to put a bit it. tricky. It, it, gets, it, it, it tricky. gets frustrating when mm. people are like, it's not that bad. Guys, yeah. it really is that bad. You yeah. take a day off, whether you're writing a test or not, you stay home. You yeah. cannot move. That's mm. how bad the pains are. Mm. But game day, You'll be sleeping whole way. If you're traveling by bus, you'll sleep the whole way on that bus. You've mm. medicated yourself into a coma mm. so that when you get there and you start warming up, mm. you still have to pay. Yeah. And then when you don't play to your best on that day, mm. no, you're not taking this serious. This mm. is why. You're going to get dropped. Mm -hmm. you know? And remember, there's competition. Yeah, there's competition. There's competition. There's as much as, that you know what I mean. Yeah. As much as we 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 say that it's an amateur sport, mm. there is always someone there take, who's willing to take your spot, young or old. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Yeah. There's many people who've left the sport, came back. Yeah, yeah. It, it shows. Where at any time, no one spot is guaranteed. Exactly. Man. I want to quickly do something interesting. You know, you've got a great profile. Hey, people don't know. Rakwati Samakoa. <laughs> you got a great yeah. profile, man. Mm -hmm. And let's talk about your certifications. You know, you have the following. And I think, you know, which is so amazing. World Rugby, Rugby Ready Certificate Approved. Yes. Uh, World Rugby Laws of the Game Certificate Approved. And I said World Rugby. Yes. All right? Not regional rugby. World yes. Rugby. World Rugby IRB Level 1 15 Man Coaching Certificate. Muswampala, Tumza. Tumza, why not Rompala? So, yeah. 
You also have achieved uh, so much. In 2013, you came second place in the women's Usas at the The seven. first year you ever took part, so wow. you came second, ranked 10th to second. Yeah. Wow, wow, wow. So, I mean, let's just talk about just the coaching side and mm -hmm. the world accreditations, you know? Yeah. Yeah, what is the plan? Because these are not easy to accumulate. They're know? not. The yeah. plan was, okay, I was home at that time, yeah. didn't have a job, didn't have anything. So I was like... Mm. Um, a friend of mine was like to me, just do these things because yeah. you're going to boost yourself. I'm like, boost myself for what? Because yeah. coaching is for men's. Yeah. I have not seen a woman's anywhere. Yeah. But then the dream is to, like, guys, break into Saru as the first female 15 senior women's coach. Okay. That is the dream. You said it right here. Yeah, you that is said the dream. It right here. Yeah. So if if I can't make it as a player, guys, I am jumping in yeah. as, <laughs> as a coach. <laughs> ah, noise. Yeah. One way or the other. So what game. about killing two birds with one stone? Yes. Yeah. Now I, let, let's, as I said, Arfaga Spice mm. Let's make this real. Let's make our listeners, you know, listen to what they wanna hear. Mm. I wanna get your view on the quota system. You know, it's something that I know can be very sensitive to talk about but it has to be discussed you know what is your view of the quota system is it beneficial is it good it's, is it not okay look it's good for yeah. the players that were overlooked or all, all those other years but mm. personally as um i'm not i'm not gonna say i'm a hardcore radical africanist yeah but i just believe why do we even have a quota system in an african continent mm. where majority mm. of us are black yeah. Why even have that where the minority is the one that's getting yeah. the major call ups? Like even with the game that's going on against that's gonna go on tomorrow against, against Argentina, Argentina. Yeah. I literally watched looked at that team picture. I counted. Yeah. There are sixteen whites. And how many blacks? Because and black I think I think they're eight or nine. Well. Yes. Yeah, I'm counting I counted yeah. them as blacks. Yeah. And I think it's eight or nine. Mm -hmm. How is that even possible? Hmm. 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 Because guys in a country where majority, 80%, are who, black people. Walk down the street, you will count probably 50 black people before you bump into a white person. Mm. Fact. Mm. Mm. When mm. you go to club rugby, you will see majority black people. Mm. Then you will see one team that is white. But how many rugby structures are there in townships? You know, let's let's bring that because rugby has a way of, and I want to be honest, man, mm. it, it, it benefits, let's be honest. Yep. You know, our listeners, if you don't have to agree, because, you know, that's why the show exists. We have to debate. <laughs> we have to engage, you know. But rugby in general is associated as a white sport. Definitely. You know, it's a sport for white people. Yes. This is just a generalization. Mm. And the reality is it's benefiting more white people than black people. It is because, um, one, for black people, because with my coach, we mm. had a chat about it where he was like, no, I only joined rugby because I saw the Soweto Rugby Club kids getting free kit from Nike. Mm. And for black people, that's how most of them got in, into it. It's not it. that they don't, they don't play soccer and whatever, yeah. but they, we are so oversaturated in the soccer stream. Yeah. Most of them float into the rugby just for free kit. Mm. So I understand it does benefit the white people because now we're like, oh, no, look, I have a black. There is. There 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 is. Come here. Come here, Sipo. And then you'll find even a Sipo who can't even say, hello, my name is Sipo. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, and it's those kind of blacks, yeah. the 702 kind of blacks, yes. as they call them. Yes, yes. So, you went to a private school. Yes, they yes. went to a private school. Amalgamated and English. You know right? what I mean? So yes. um, what, it's, as much as we, but we're there. Mm. I refuse. We are there. Mm. There's clubs like Soweto Rabi Club who have been there. Yeah. There's uh, now Kahiso. There's I don't know, man. There's so many teams that are there. There's so quite you're a telling, few. so you're telling me that with development and transformation, you you're gonna have really. eight. And I mean, just, eight. Just let's be honest, Dooms. You know, I, I know that's why there's a moment of silence because we like Arba <laughs> vote. You know, yeah. As much I, I mean, just think about it. I'm not even talking about Gauteng. Yes. The Eastern Cape guys. Yes. Alone. The Eastern Cape alone can field a full 15-man Springbok squad. Yes. That much I can put my hands down on. You exactly. know? Exactly. You know, but it's like, and also let's talk sponsorship. Mm -hmm. You know? That's why the sport, you know, produces a lot. That's why the development structures are strong because predominantly the white companies yes. are investing yes. there. And, I mean, let's compare 
rugby to football quickly. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, the rugby guys, when they are recruiting, they start from the age of plus minus seven, yes. eight, yes. nine years old, finding potential. Baliki rugby, that's mm -hmm. what they call it. And then you if know? you're a favorite black, do you get adopted by a white family? Yes, that's where we, <laughs> no matter how dark you are, you know? <laughs> <laughs> if you're that black, do you get adopted by a, a white family? Yes. And then they groom you and they groom you. You go to a worse you school. You go to a worse school, yeah. but you still visit your mom. They go yes. Tembisa or Sosha or wherever. How go Tembisa or Bolel Africans? Hey, you can't even speak Tswana because those schools don't allow you to speak yeah, vernacular. Yeah, it's yeah. not according to the school rules. Now you disassociate yourself with your blackness, but yeah. you're still the favorite black. Yeah, you see, these are things that need to be mm -hmm. discussed, you know, because if we don't discuss this, these are things we're going to keep on ignoring. Yeah. And the next generation, I remember while I was playing for the Bulls, man, shout out to the Bulls. I still I support the Bulls, you yeah. know, by all means. But while I was still at Loftus, Honestly speaking, it was so unfair, Joe. You know, where you get there, you get to all these African schools. I'm from an English school at that time. The only guy from my school at Aren't that time. Aren't you lucky? You know, you I'm, are so lucky. Like because I in, in, in Pretoria, <laughs> I, it, it, it's much better, I guess. Mm. But when you get to practice, you know, already the moves are explained in Afrikaans. Yep. You know, the line outs are explained in Afrikaans. Yep. Now, the worst part that I realized by being a black player in a setup where there's majority white people, you know, professionally, mm -hmm. is that when I make one mistake, ah, it's over for you. Make bench. one mistake. They bench show you that you are not on the team, the team that's traveling. You won't be forgiven. Mm. You know, same thing we see now with the spring box. You yes. know, you know, you get your, your, your umpipi. If he knocks the ball off once, knock the whole on. country goes, oh, that transformation, that quarter that player. Quarter eh? player, you oh. know. You know, so for, mm. for me, I think there's something that still needs to be rectified in, in South African rugby. And, yeah. and and look, yes, they're doing well. They they A big shout out to the Springboks. I mean, having won the rugby championship, I think is a big one. You know, mm. beating, oh, well, at least drawing against New Zealand. I see you, you, you're you not agreeing with me. Talk to me, to me. What are you saying? What are you I saying? I just feel like... Look, man, I yeah. feel like the big teams withdrew key players yeah. at that time who got injured to save them for the World Cup. So Such as who? Let's not just say... Nah, I'm not going to name drop with that. you got to so, name no, drop. My thing is, my, my point is, man, yeah. right now we're riding on a high and I had a chat with someone who was like, you learn more from your losses than you do from your wins. Mm. So now we're riding a high. Yeah. We're on cloud nine. We think, ah, we got this for the World Cup. Yeah. Because you asked me for my top three, remember? Yes, I did. Just before we got yeah. into studio. Yeah. yeah. So the reason I was like, the Springboks could take it as long as we learn from all the losses. We don't ride that high forever and think, okay, that team that won yeah. is the only team that can actually perform at the World Cup. Yeah. I really don't think that is the best we can produce. Okay. Okay, there's still more. There's still more. So there's you, some you, that level of deepness that we can dig into. Are you critiquing Rasi Rasmus's selection? For this weekend, yeah. Okay, for you, this one. For this weekend, I, you Against know. Against Argentina. Yeah. Brits, <laughs> guys. I don't, I, like, I don't understand. I don't understand. I spoke to my friend Takir and mm. I was like, watch. Mm. Close to the Rugby World Cup, when they're just about to announce, someone is going to come out of nowhere, out of retirement. Yeah. And it's going to take someone's spot. Mm. Remember in the last World Cup, Sia Kulisi mm. was on the bench the whole World Cup. Yeah. He got like five minutes. Yeah, yeah. I, and then Tabuhama Hoje was left out, and they took who? Luit de Yaga was a John de Villiers also. Uh, uh, yeah. Luit was a, it was a sub. John de Villiers yeah. was starting. Yeah. Does it make sense? Mm. No. Mm. I'm not saying um, Luet is a better lock, yeah. but I feel like Debo Mahoji was on all. He was and the quarter player on the on the what do you call this billboard? Yeah, he was yeah, there yeah, wearing yeah. like support the team and 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 the and then that, what happened? The one they used to advertise. He was watching it at home on TV with us. Maratums, well, now you're hitting a nerve. Hey, hey, no. Oh, no, my thing is, but I love rugby. Ne? I yeah. love rugby so much, but and it's one of those sports that you make lasting friendships yeah. for life. Yeah, yeah, that's true. From opponents to your team. Brotherhood, sisterhood. Yeah. Do you understand? Yeah. And it's so frustrating that there are still people that view it as a whites only and whites only deserve to make it. Yeah. Yeah. Whites are the only ones that know how to play rugby. If it didn't mm. go to gray, if it didn't go to mm. whatever All others, worse. you know what I mean? Yeah. It's unfair. It is. There's rough talent if given the opportunity yeah. and the same um, grooming that certain white players get. Yeah. 
Abu Eben, it's a bit, probably didn't even have a choice mm. in playing. Mm. Some of them, I'm, I'm even told, I forgot, one of the players was like, no, he was a great cricket player. Mm. But because, you know, if you had to choose between yeah, well. Springboks and Proteas. You go Springboks. You go Springboks because Which that's the sense. favorite sport. Yeah, yeah. So I just feel it's unfair that mm. we still have to view a certain sport as someone else's mm. when we're in Africa, in South Africa, where we preach the Rainbow Nation, mm. where we preach inclusiv- uh, inclusivity. inclusivity. Yeah. And you still have these same injustices. And it's not just, mm. it goes from, okay, only white, then the black guys get discriminated, yeah. then when you get to the woman, yeah. you, there's majority blacks, so they're like, hey, yeah, you know, no. there's no Mariki on the team. <laughs> I, I'm not going to support that. I hear you, dude. Mm. I hear you. I hear you. I want to quickly speak uh, stats quickly, you know, yeah, yeah. because I see time is not on our side. Mm-hmm. And, you know, when we're having a good time, man, this is so nice because now I get to see Tumza's mind, man. I get to hear her mindset and where she's positioned. So I like that. Mm-hmm. But now let's talk uh, Rugby World Cup, the Webb Ellis Cup. Yes. Now, uh, New Zealand, having won three titles in 1987, two mm-hmm. th- 2011, and 2015. Mm-hmm. And then we've got Australia. I think they've won it twice in 1991 and 1999. And then we've got uh, us, the Springboks. We won it in 95. We will never forget that moment where Matiba and Francois Pinar, yeah. you know, that number six jersey. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then also in 2007 when John Smith lifted it up. My we, favorite captain. Yeah. Oh, Pretoria Boys man. High, guys. I yeah? love that man. I, I can see someone in studios from Pretoria Boys <laughs> High. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So John Smith, yeah, lifting that one mm-hmm. up. And then in England, it was, uh, they won it once in 2003. Mm-hmm. Now we speaking. 2019. Yeah. I want your prediction. Dooms, before we wrap things up, I want to know who you think is taking the Rugby World Cup, who is getting the silver, who is getting the bronze. Podium finishes. Yo. What are your predictions? Um, I feel like um, I watched England, so yeah. I think England is really going to fight for that third spot with, against South Africa. England? England. Okay. Okay. Did you see their number eight? I just like look. power, 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 power. Just that. Uh, Even now, the, uh, the the number fourteen, the wing. Yeah. At six four on a wing. No, but we just need AP work there, man. We need Ganky. It doesn't matter how big. Nah, the AP the boy. Be, yeah. AP has to come through. He uh, has yeah. to come through. He yeah. can't be newcomer of the year and then. Phew, Come disappear. on, all of no, a sudden disappear. No, 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 the boy has to come back. And to our listeners worldwide, man, me and Tooms can drop this one <laughs> right now. We are claiming our pure guy. Yes. Yeah? He's our boy. AP needs yes. to come back. Speaking UJ all, all the, the way. way. Yeah, that's what yes, I'm talking about. Knowing yeah. AP from the days when we were pushing in the gym, yeah. from him playing my Juba, yeah, guys. Yeah, that yeah. boy Young guns. is a w- workaholic. Varsity Cup. Yep. Lions. Yep. Up until he made spring ball. But you were still giving me the predictions. Let's go. Okay. So you're saying Springboks is not making a podium finish. We're going to fight for it. With England. Yes. Second? Because uh, this I'm is going to give me okay. the idea who's going to be on top. I I, I think Australia is going to be... Australia? Yes. You reckon? I think. Okay. Because my top four teams, honestly, in the World Cup, New Zealand, Australia, South Africa, England. England. Can I give my prediction for you? Mm-hmm. All right, let's go. Let me see. Um, I think third place will be Ireland. Hmm. Northern Hemisphere. True. They're very good. I, I I would have said Wales, but I think they might have overpeaked during the IRP Six Nations. Yes. You know, so I'm not sure if they still have momentum. Nah. But I would go Ireland. Definitely. I will see Jay Stander. Hmm. You know, they're powerful. Uh, second place, I will say New Zealand. Yeah, hmm. I will say it. First place, I'm going Springboks. Let me say why. Why? M- Tell me or educate me. You know, the thing is, Springboks have a way of winning the World Cup after about my 12 year type of thing. You mm-hmm. know, 95, 2007, 2007, 2019. You know, they got this vibe of, of doing things in, in a, a cultural way. The young, there's a young, youthful, energetic spirit. True. And their style of rugby has really transformed. It's no longer slow it down, slow mm-hmm. it down. You know the Burki rugby. Yeah, Sopo, Blue Bulls rugby. Blue Bulls rugby, mm. you know, forwards, forwards, yes. crash, crash, crash. And then all of a sudden, you know, take it take out. Take it out to the wing. Yeah, yeah. nah, they, they, they can keep it going. New Zealand is seriously under pressure because people have adopted their style. 
you yeah, know? quick hands, offloads, chicken wings, everybody's keep, moving. Keep the ball in line. Mm-hmm. You know, look at Argentina now. You know, true. Yeah, yes, we thumped them last week, and yes, we're gonna thump them tomorrow. But those boys have potential. Now they're coming up. They're, they're coming, coming up. up. They yeah. could be top ten. Yeah. In the World Cup. Yeah, top ten in the World Cup. Yes, I'm not saying top five. I'm not about that. Yeah, I hear mm. you. I hear you. All right. Because Argentina, I feel like they're still playing the blue ball type of rugby, relying mm. heavily on their forwards. Mm. So, mm. um, if South Africa also, if South Africa realizes that and exposes that, then away we top. For we like I out. said, and then if South Africa also realizes New Zealand style of play against us, yeah, then I feel like look, man, instead of falling for those forced errors there by the try line and we taking the three points, yeah, I, I feel like we got them. Yeah. But if we're still gonna play how we played against them when we drew, yeah, we're gonna put ourselves under pressure for no reason, and yeah. they are opening match. Yeah, yeah, that makes yeah. sense. I, I like that. It makes sense. It makes sense. And to our listeners worldwide, of course, you still tuned in to this amazing show. I'm with Utu Milesege. <laughs> I know Tibo Touch will be proud, yeah? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> it is Sport Chats with Ren D. And of course, do make sure you touch base with us on our social media at thd. 24. Of course, do make sure you speak to me at Rendani underscore N-O-1-M-C. Dooms, we've got less than five minutes to go. we got to wrap things up. Um, i got to say this. I know I'm a male figure, you mm-hmm. know? I'm a man, and it's not easy, you know, speaking about certain things. And we, today, it's getting more difficult to speak to women about yeah. woman things coming from a male perspective. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, we benefit from the system of patriarchy. Dips. You know, we benefit from all these, you know, negative things. Mm-hmm. And if we say we, 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 we are fighting against, you know, oppression of women and all of that, maybe we need to take more action, yes. you know? I want to know from a queen who's in a career field that's dominantly, um, you know, uh, mixed with males. Yeah. I want to know if you could speak to every, if you had every man's ear right now, Mm-hmm. You know, and I, I don't want to limit it to rugby. I want in you to speak sphere. on behalf of mm-hmm. yeah all the queens because we're still in uh, Women's Month. Yeah. What would be the message you'd want to send? Okay, on a light note, I'd be like, men, stop mansplaining everything. Yeah, women are not that dumb. Mm. I feel like um, biologically, we are programmed to multitask better than you guys, meaning mm. we can take on a larger role. That's mm. science speaking. Mm. Science that was created by men yeah. and was proved by men. Yeah. Two, stop killing us, guys. Mm. We did nothing to you guys. Stop killing us. Stop abducting us. Stop selling us. Stop chopping us up. Stop um, judging us for our lifestyles. Mm. Just stop. The same Mm. pressures you face, we face them on a greater scale. Worse is some women are also on your side. They want to mansplain and say a man does this and woman does this. No. If that was the case, I wouldn't be in rugby. Because what my job is a man's job. Yeah. Can we also, too, acknowledge that you don't know everything? Mm. Mm. You don't know everything. Women don't know everything either. But then we're willing to learn. We're willing to adopt everything you guys give us. Yeah. Be willing to return the favor. Yeah. Yeah. And three, the beauty and brains expression really grates me. Mm. Or you can't be beautiful and smart at the same time. Mm. Certain people might fit that stereotype. Fine. That's good for you. Not everyone. Okay, mm, mm, mm. not in this day and age where people can express themselves freely. Yeah. As guys, you're now freeing yourself mentally. You say we suffered from depression. There's certain pressures we're facing, high suicide numbers for men. If we can understand that and even put that in our confidence, because yeah. that's something women have known for years. That's true. Can we also give the same level of understanding from women? Yeah, yeah. So that's the message you'd want all men to hear. Please respect us. We'll respect you. Done. Remember, we cannot be calling ourselves kings if we don't acknowledge our queens. Amen. Man. Now, mm-hmm. to me, we've got this section on uh, Sport Chats with Ren D. Yes. It's a 60-second quiz, and oh. we've got five seconds to start it. <laughs> so I want to see how many questions you can jump through and try and answer as honest as possible. Okay. All right. So we're going to wrap it up in style. It was so funny with Porsche yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully we can see how, let's see how far you go. But Porsche has the record because she's the first one so far. Okay. So all right, question. Question one, what do you never leave home without? My phone. What's your favorite uh, workout? Legs, squats. Okay. Who is your favorite athlete in any sports? Ooh, I got a lot. Casta Semenya, okay. SBW. I'll take uh, Casta. Yeah. I'll take Casta. All right. <laughs> Which would you rather eat? Chicken wings, pizza, or burger? 
that's when you're cheating. All of. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's your favorite place, country or city, uh, where you've played? Yo, I've only played in South Africa, so okay. Cape Town. Cape Town, yeah. the mother city. Okay. Yes. And um, what's the best advice you've ever received and from who? My dad, um, don't be a hindrance, make your own money, don't rely on a man. Sure. Ah, your dad is powerful. And number nine, favorite uh, local rugby team and favorite international rugby team? Blue Bulls and New Zealand, ah. even though it doesn't sound like it. <laughs> <laughs> You're almost there. you got five more seconds. Yes. Driving or flying? Driving. Boxes, briefs, or panty? None. <laughs> <laughs> I think we made it. You got to question 11. That's the wow. new record, man. I'll give you a round of applause. Ba, 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 ba. Come on, man. We, we had one more question left, but let me just ask you just for interest sake. Yes. Chocolate or ice cream? Chocolate ice cream. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Man, Dooms, I'm so happy that you joined us. Yeah. I know you're going to be joining me you know, consistently, especially Devs. because we're building up towards the Rugby Definitely. World Cup. A big shout out to you. You are a reflection of greatness. You inspire me. Seeing you grow, man, all I can say is, Thank you for I'll, having I'll me. I'll fuck that car. I'll fuck that car. And yes. just quickly, in two seconds, words of inspiration. Um, to the girl that's sitting at home wanting to be an athlete, I keep saying this over and over. You're not going to get supported by your family. You're not going to get supported by your friends. They're going to tell you it's not worth it. Mm. Just do it. Yeah. Be your own backup plan. Be your own hype man. Trust me, when you get to do it and you are standing there, you'll be the Casta Semenya of your family Ish. and your community. Ish. Just do it. Man, and when can people get a hold of you? Uh, Twitter, do me underscore Liseke. Same on Instagram, do me underscore Liseke. Facebook, do me lo Liseke. Yeah. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, a queen of note, do me lo Liseke. Yeah. Hailing all the way from Limpopo right here on Sport Chats with Ren D. A big shout out to you, my queen. And a big shout out also to Zin Tlempupa. Yes. And all the best to the queen.